everybody, it's me, Giggles, and I just have to say, if you like the Lily Mad Whip series featuring myself, which you must since you're here for this episode, be sure to check out the novel by Will Dolphin, available now on Amazon, on Kindle, and paperback. Not only is it a great way to keep something from your favorite series, but it's also a wonderful way to support the author. And now, on to tonight's story. This guy, Tony, this child stealer, child stabber, murderous madman brought a chair. It's one of those metal folding out chairs they use at school when there's a concert being held in the cafeteria and they make us all hold hands and sing songs. Mrs. Cardopolis, the music teacher, has been having us practice every week for months. Except none of the boys in the class ever actually practice. So it's a bunch of mumbling kids trying not to be heard over Miss Cardopolis on her piano and one or two girls who dream big of being the next Tiffany. I think we're alone now. I sing quietly to calm myself. It's not the best choice of song, though. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Tony the child stabber rips some more of the metal-looking tape off his roll with white teeth and binds my other leg to the chair. He's pulled my unicorn pajama pant leg up over my knees for some reason, so the tape is right on my skin. It hurts to twist and try to shift with the stuff on my legs. What kind of tape is this? I ask him. It hurts. It's duct tape he says, never looking up from his work. I almost forget he's probably going to stab me to death and snort laughter. Did you say duct tape? Yes. This must be what a vet uses when a duck gets a broken wing. It reminds me of one of my dad's favorite songs. Take these broken wings and learn to fly again. Will you shut up? Tony says. It's a rhetorical question. Those are questions grown-ups don't actually want you to answer, like, are you really this stupid, or what makes you think I'm going to give you your allowance when you haven't bathed in two weeks? He finishes wrapping the duct tape around my middle. He stands up and admires his handiwork, or maybe he looks at it with regret. I'm not a mind reader. So I'm going to die now, in an abandoned car wash, at night, in these stupid unicorn pajamas, And when Detective Guthrie comes looking for me at the hotel and finds me missing, he's probably going to assume I ran off until some passing hobo smells me rotting back here and gets a nasty surprise. And then everyone in town is going to be like, Remember that Mad Whip girl they found dead in stupid unicorn pajamas? I heard she died of embarrassment. And they'd be half right. Tony goes back in the car and rummages around in the trunk some more. He tosses a hammer on the ground and then one of those wobbly wood saws like for trimming branches and then pliers, a drill with a long electric cord. (sighs) Each item fills me with more dread. Except I guess the drill because where's he going to plug that thing in? This place clearly has no electricity. I'm sitting here duct taped to this chair in the headlights of his car. Finally, he comes back around with some small tube thing. He waves it at me but I can't read it because the light's on the other side of it. What is that? I ask, trembling slightly. This? He turns it around and looks at it like he didn't realize he was holding a knife. This is just a stick of deodorant. Do I smell? Maybe I smell. Why else would he brandish a deodorant like a weapon? He kneels down and rolls my unicorn pajama pants leg back up over my knees as they've started to slide down. I've still got the band-aids that crazy Mrs. Clark put on them before she knocked me out and had her crazy son throw me in the basement. The scrapes on my knees start to tingle like all the hairs on my legs are trying to stand up on end. Tony looks up at me. I can't really make out his face, what with the car headlights behind him. He's just a dark silhouette with the slightest glint of light in his eyes from something behind me. Probably the moon or streetlight outside. Did you hurt yourself? He asks. It sounds almost like he's concerned, but then he picks up at the edge of one of the bandages, gets a nail under it, and rips the whole thing off. Ha ha ha! I yell as whatever scabs had formed tear off with the band-aid. I'm not laughing, but it sounds like I'm laughing. I thrash about in the chair, but the duct tape holds fast. Probably good thing, because the last thing ducks want is to suddenly fall apart mid-flight because the tape holding them together doesn't stick. I'm going to torture you now. You know what that is, torture? Hmm, that's where you go. What do you want for dinner? And I say, can we go to Pizza Hut? And you say, money's too tight for that. And I say, can we have hot dogs? And you say, I think I'll make tuna noodle casserole. And he clicks his tongue. I'm talking about physical torture. Oh, yeah, I nod. I had an older brother, so I know that kind too. 
Tony flicks the band-aid at my face and then pops the cap off his stick of deodorant and winds the bottom, causing the translucent gel to slowly rise. He smirks and then casually rubs the stick across the red and angry scrape on my left knee. Suddenly, my knee is on fire. Like it makes my brain start screaming and before I realize it, the screaming is coming out of my mouth. Ah! I jerk as hard as I can to get away from him and the fire in my knee. But I can't. I can't move. I can't get away. He grabs my other leg and quickly rips the bandage off my other knee. The scrape on that one is even worse. It had bits of gravel stuck in it that Mrs. Clark had eagerly picked out. It quickly starts to bleed again and there's yellow pus stuff around the edges. Stop it! I shout. I try to wiggle my leg to get it out of his hand. What do you want? Just stop it! Don't! Stop it! Tony mimics me in a high-pitched voice. He grinds the deodorant into my scraped knee, sending a river of fire up my other leg and a round of screams pouring out of my mouth. My brain goes blank. It's just blackness and this high-pitched whistling screaming combo. For a brief moment, I'm sitting in the middle of that dark movie theater in the veil while some action movie plays on the screen. It's a scene with two guys fighting each other while a bunch of people watch them, cheering and shouting. I'm still screaming as both my legs go up in flames right before my eyes. There's a guy two rows ahead of me with his back to me and as I suddenly appear in the theater screaming and my legs going up in flames, he shouts in alarm and scatters popcorn in the air. He turns to look at me and yells, what the f- And then I'm back in the abandoned car wash. The chair's fallen over backward and I'm staring up at the dark ceiling. Tony's shadowy face appears above me. I can't see him clearly because my eyes are runny with tears. He looks like a big, blurry, shadowy blob. That looked like it hurt. My knees feel like they're being pressed against two searing hot cookie sheets sprayed with cooking spray to keep the cookies from sticking to the sheet because nobody likes it when the cookies stick to the sheet, especially the dishwasher. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I sniffle, my nose runny with boogers. He stands up, towering over me. A second later, something wet and slimy hits me on the cheek. Did he just spit on me? Gross! Ugh, I can smell it, too! It smells like cigarettes and greasy fast food. It makes me want to gag, so I gag, because why hold back at a time like this? You took everything from me, you little bitch. I'm an 11-year-old orphan! I scream. I don't even know you, you psycho buttface! You're an 11-year-old hellspawn is what you are. He snarls at me, emphasizing the hellspawn part by putting his foot on my right knee and grinding down on it, driving screaming hot pain up and down my leg again. How many have suffered because of you, huh? That's another rhetorical question, isn't it? But he's acting like he expects me to answer it. I don't know how many people have suffered. Let me think, let me think. All I can think is- Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Um, Roger suffered? My, my brother Roger, that's one. And, uh... Does my therapist count? I can't even remember her name now, but, but that wasn't my fault, was it? Tony seems to get angrier that I'm not answering his rhetorical question. Or maybe he's enjoying watching me cry and scream. His face is hard to decipher since it's hidden mostly in the shadows and my vision is so blurry. Whatever he's feeling, he decides to pull the deodorant stick out and rubs it aggressively on both my knees some more. The fire shoots up my leg again, but it's actually dulled somewhat this time. Not enough to keep me from screaming, though. Ah! Damn it, I gotta focus. Roger's one. My mom and dad, that's three. Meredith, that dog that died at our house. Nasty Axe or whatever his name was. And then it dawns on me. He doesn't want an actual number. He's here about someone specific. Someone he blames me for. I remember that when I first saw him outside Officer Jenny's police car, that I knew he had lost a sister recently. That has to be it. He's here because of his sister. Your sister! I scream. My voice echoes throughout the empty car wash. Your sister! Your sister! Your sister! I pray my voice reaches someone passing by outside, but who'd be walking by an abandoned car wash in the middle of the night? Tony stiffens and steps back from me. Say her name. Oh, geez. He can't be talking about my therapist. He just can't be. I didn't do anything to her. The only other person I can think of could be... Meredith? Is Tony Meredith's brother? Does she have a brother? I guess she could have one, but this guy seems so much older than she was. Say her name! His face, what's visible of it, contorts with rage. 
He almost seems to glow red, but maybe that's just my vision or my imagination. Meredith! I screech at him, straining against this stupid duct tape. Damn, ducks are gonna get me killed! I killed Meredith! And then it hits me. What I did. I really did kill Meredith. I mean, I knew that she died because of me, and I've told myself countless times that it was my fault, but I, I don't think I've ever heard myself say it. I killed Meredith. I killed my parents. I killed that poor dog. <sighs> that poor dog. Things are quiet. I can't wipe my eyes and it's driving me crazy. I actually scratched that, it's just annoying. I think I'm going to stop using the phrase driving me crazy after this. I've got a real idea now what it's like to see someone driven crazy. David Clark, Mrs. Clark, Tony. If you've all done one thing for me today before Tony murders me, you've all shown me what crazy truly is. Tony is shaking violently. No, he's, he's crying. Hearing his sister's name must have really affected. Ah! He slams his foot into the chair. No! Okay, never mind what I said. He's still angry. He kneels down and gets right in my face again. He's got something in his hand. I hope it's not that stupid deodorant stick. I'm never wearing deodorant. Never. Oh, it's not deodorant. It's shiny and metallic. Even through my blurry vision, I can tell it's a big, long knife. I changed my mind. Let's go back to the deodorant. Who doesn't love smelling fresh? Tony drags the edge of the blade across my cheek. Coincidentally, I think that's where I've already got a scar from being slashed by Lisa Welch when we got into a knife fight months ago. It's always been a little itchy and numb there. No. Tony whispers. You say her name. You say my sister's name, you little shit. I don't care who else you've killed with your demonic rituals and your witch's oath. You say her name. Samantha, say it. I say the wrong thing. Who? Tony explodes in rage. Samantha, say it! He stands up and grabs the chair, lifting me back up into a sitting position. Oh, thank goodness. Say her name, Samantha! He looks down at my hands and pulls his evil deodorant stick out. He stares at me with eyes that almost seem to roll around independently of each other in their sockets and rubs the torture gel across both my palms. I don't even flinch at it. My body is just a burning oil well of pain. Or a geyser. Like the one in that state park that always erupts on time. I forget what it's called. It's just a geyser of pain. A pain geyser. I glare at Tony. I don't know who Samantha is. I sound incredibly calm, despite the snot and tears probably covering my face and the whole screaming just a moment ago. He actually looks taken aback slightly. He even steps back as if to emphasize being taken aback. It's a weird term, isn't it? Taken aback. I'll think about it later when I'm not being tortured and murdered. I suspect I'll have plenty of time to think about things as I'm lying in my dead body in a grave next to Roger's soulless corpse. No. No. Tony tosses the torture gel on the ground and pulls the knife out again. No, you killed her. You killed Sam. You killed my baby sister. I feel at peace. He's wrong about me. No matter what else happens, I have that. I rub my face against my shoulder to get his spit off my cheek, finally. Ugh, that smell was so nasty. I don't know who you're talking about. I may have done some bad things. Some bad things. He chokes back a laugh. But I've never killed a baby. At least, I don't think I have. Tony stops laughing abruptly. He closes his eyes and rubs his head with his non-knife hand. He sighs. It's the same sign my dad made when he was explaining to me why the garage door opener is not a toy. Are you stupid? I'm 11. He nods and runs this through his brain for a moment. The nodding slowly turns into a head shake. No, 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 you're not just some dumb little brat. You're not pulling the wool over my eyes with this innocent routine. I see you for what you are. His voice spills back up into a shout. Horse of Satan. Why does he keep calling me a horse? This is the weirdest insult. Samantha, he says his sister's name again. Samantha Flores, you killed her. You burned her alive. Suddenly, it all makes sense. Officer Flowers. He's talking about Officer Flowers, the Lady in Black, the Angel of Death, Duma's totem carrier. Officer Flowers! I shout, relieved to finally understand. Your Officer's first Flowers' brother! 
He points the knife at my face. Lionel, you... No, you butcher her name. No. Say Flores. Say Samantha Flores. I didn't kill your sis... Fifth... Fist... I didn't kill your sister. She tried to save me. Of course she did. He waves a knife in the air like a conductor waves their stick thingy. She was an officer of the law, a hero. She saved people. She fought for children. Not children like you. Not twisted, sick, pyromaniacal little stains that get thrills out of watching others suffer. You don't understand. I want to jump out of my chair and shake him like a ragdoll, but the stupid duct tape is stronger than cement. Also, he's an adult and twice my size. I didn't burn her. That was my friend, Meredith. It's probably not going to win you points, Lily. Try a different approach. I mean, my friend, this girl I knew, Meredith, burned your Samantha. But that wasn't her fault either because she was being controlled by this rat weasel fink guy named Felix Clay who was trying to... I honestly don't know what he was trying to do. It's still kind of confusing. He's actually listening to me, which is a huge relief. He's got that expression on his face like when the teacher writes a math problem on the board and it's got letters in it. You can't add letters to math, Mr. Topper. What's next? Numbers during silent reading assignments? I need to watch what I say very carefully and note how he responds. I'm just an innocent bystander to your sister getting burned. He starts to frown. This is bad. Okay, don't paint yourself as innocent. You just admitted to killing someone earlier. Also, you called his sister's killer your friend. Felix Clay is the one you want. His expression changes to one of thinking. He's remembering that name. Good. Tony looks puzzled. He's still brandishing the knife like he's going to stab me to death with it. I should probably prepare to be dead soon. Maybe I can talk the angels into letting me go to hang out with Roger in his movie theater and we can watch E.T. the Extraterrestrial or Flight of the Navigator. I like those movies with spaceships and aliens. I don't believe you, he finally says. Well, crap. He moves towards me. I clench my eyes shut, tensing for the feeling of his knife plunging into my body somewhere. Preferably somewhere where it all happens quick and I'm just dead without having to suffer. Meredith Patterson had a melted Barbie that was an angel's totem that made her cause fires when she was near other people with the totems, and I was another person with the totem because I can see things before they happen, but also Felix Clay had a totem that really made no sense, and I don't know exactly how it works, but his totem and her totem and my totem powered each other all up, and he messed with our brains and made us think things that we didn't actually think, and then your sister came to save us from him, and he made Meredith use her firepower to burn the whole house and burn your sister, but then her ghost walked in on me in the bathroom and gave me a badge to use to kill Meredith in revenge, but I couldn't do it, and then I got in a knife fight with my school bully and I think I just skipped a whole bunch of other stuff but it ended with me accidentally using three totems including some dog's totem and I blew up my entire house with Meredith and my parents in it so I swear to you please don't stab me because Meredith is dead and Felix Clay is still out there somewhere and he's the real reason Officer Flowers died. I peek one eye open. Tony has stopped again. I open both eyes. We look at each other. Your sister was a good person. I say, trying to sound calm, but I can hear my voice trembling. Maybe a little overly focused on getting revenge for her death, but she died trying to save me. Tony's face seems to collapse. Not like literally like his head caves in, but like he was all clenched up in an angry scowl and suddenly his features droop in his eyes. I can't see them clearly, but there's tears glistening and what little light there is coming off of things from the headlights of his car. Did you kill Gretchen Buttersquash? I ask gently. Tony the child stabber, brother of Samantha Flowers, the angel of death. No, the protector of children, sort of. Takes a huge gulp of air that seems to settle in his chest and then he sobs. I thought she was you. He says it again to himself. I thought she was you. This isn't what your sister would have wanted. He falls back, sitting on the hood of his car with a thump. He's staring at the ground, his dark eyes darting back and forth like he's reading a book. I thought it was you. I followed the stories in the paper. It was you in that house when she died. It was you in the house that burned down months back. It was you. I traced your name. I did what she would have done. I followed the clues. He looks up at me. No, it was you. He stands back up. His hands are shaking. No, 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 no. It was you. No. 
I say, also shaking as much as I can anyway. It was Felix. Tony moves forward and puts a hand over my mouth. It tastes salty and smells like that nasty deodorant. He tilts my head up to look him in the eyes. You killed my sister. He says matter-of-factly. And then he turns and walks back to the car like a zombie. He doesn't pick up the hammer or the saw or the drill or even the deodorant he was torturing me with. He just gets in the car, staring out of the driver's seat with vacant eyes, and starts to back it out of the car wash. As the light from his headlights fade, I look down and see a dark stain growing on the front of my stupid unicorn pajamas top. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. Quick reminder, I am also a narrator over at The Chilling. If you guys like the stories that you're listening to here, then I'm sure you'll like the stories that you can listen to over at Chilling, because they're almost the same thing, I'm still narrating them, but you can select your own background music or background sounds, and you could select a whole mess of other narrators, such as Autumn Ivy, Swamp Dweller, and a bunch of my other friends. If you guys are interested in checking out Chilling App, starting up with a free trial, you can use the link in the description down below, or you can head over to thechillingapp.com and also use those free trials to win prizes from their giveaways. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, you guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months, and things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on. You guys are the ones who are keeping me sane, and I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. <laughs> so, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. B. Foster, Pepper Squeezer, Travis, Joseph Calarudo, Who Would It Be, Dante Kincaid, Watts Hound 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Priorch, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff the Killer's Cultist, Love You M&M, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Amber Cork, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sam Ahai, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Marius, Captain Scurvy, Estabeen, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sack Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinian, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tri Magazine, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Michael Limchok, Dirk Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sand, Shelly J, Bacamel, The Legal Account, Melted Lake, Polly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, 80 Nephew, Theater Chip, Acid System, Mog, Kiri the Sloth, Buster's Lampshade, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Corey Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.